Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. While I'm redoing a large chunk of uh, the package opening, <laughs> because, well, I've been sitting here talking for a few minutes, and uh, what's going on is, <laughs> well, basically, uh, I didn't turn the microphone on, so nothing uh, was recorded. So anyways, it is now 21 minutes into the 21st day of February 2020, 2023, and as I said before, we're changing up. We're, uh, I've been in a long hiatus to restructure things because YouTube has been censoring everything. Um, anyone, even though they are very tolerant, they call the the. I, I'm not. I'm not right. I'm not a conservative. I'm an independent. But a lot of my ideas along a a a line with. Uh, what's called the right, or the conservative, the alt-right, or whatever they want to call them now. Uh, and so a large chunk of my stuff has been censored. So to avoid the censorship, I've now distributed my channel across a variety of different services, so that the stuff that is not okay is is presented elsewhere rather than here. This is going to be the continuation of uh, our life as Cyborg Alpha, but this is going to be the Kawhi Tea House version just is going to uh, focus on more of the oh the package opening. That's what we're doing. We're doing a package opening. Yeah, the package came in. I got two clothing items from China. As I said before, my my views do not align with a lot of the people on the right and the conservative party. I am not specifically GOP in terms of the party alignment. Uh, it, for me, is I'm a person who likes very little government. I'm, I'm an independent person, and as I say, I'm independent, and I like small government because I, every time we have a larger government, uh, they interfere, they step in, they want to do things their way, and if, if someone else disagrees with them, then you get it, end up getting arrested and put in jail. That's their solution. That's how, oh, you're not going to listen to me. I have my authority. I have the authority over you. I've been given the authority over you. You're going to jail because you don't agree with me. Not because you've done anything wrong. You're not killing people. You're not murdering people. You're not raping people. You're not, you know, stealing from them. It's just you disagree with them. And how things should be done. And then that's, that's the entire issue. And then, of course, what they do is they don't give you an, a specific charge. They charge you with obstruct. And it's an empty, open charge that can mean anything. And usually the courts do define it as anything. Because the courts, once you're in the court system, they're not going to back down. You're going to be charged and convicted of something. Regardless if you've done anything or not at all. At all. It's only if you have enough money for an appeals court for, to do an appeal. That's when you can maybe argue something. But you have to have enough money for that. You have to have the right lawyers. And of course, you, you have to be able to afford the lawyers. Otherwise, if you're going to get the bargain basement uh, uh, public defender... You're not going to get anything. You're going to get time served, and that's it. They're going to throw you in jail for three to six months. You'll get out, time served, uh, and for, for nothing. Just because you didn't agree with them. And that's all it takes. And people ask, why are cops hated? Because they don't think. This problem with the police has been around for a long time. 1970s. But no one really seemed to care to sort of check up and sort of see what was going on. Anyways, let me find my scissors. I was opening this package before I realized... <laughs> Anyways, this is what it looks like. It's a vest that has a heating element in it that I could put a battery in. It's kind of like this vest that I have here. Uh, I don't know what I did with the scissors now. Kind of messed that one up. Where did the scissors go? Oh, I can't find the scissors now. Isn't that wonderful? You get everything going, and now you lose you lose the scissors. So I got to find the scissors in order to continue. I don't know what happened to them. They should have been right here, but they don't appear to be. Oh, here we go. 
hidden under a pile of things. Here are the scissors. We're not going to open this pack and see what comes what comes next. This seems to be a different package than it was before. It was the same size. I take a I take a uh, uh, five times that fits me well. As I said before, I have a particular neurological disorder called myotonia. It affects how your muscles work. Uh, mine have a dis dysfunction. Part of it is a temperature signet, uh, a temperature trigger where I have to control the temperature of my body. And this vest does it. It does a very good very good job. I got these vests for thirteen uh, for for thirty five dollars where normally I've seen them retailed online for about uh, between three and four hundred dollars. So anyway that's th th that's my uh, take on this. So, uh, I I disagree with, with with the whole issue on China. I don't have any issues with China whatsoever. People need to sort of learn to live the way they want to live, without sort of blaming others for their mistakes or whatever. So I've got to find the uh, opening and sort of see how this sort of works out. Yeah. So here it is. Here, same type of vest that I'm wearing now. Is they've changed the uh, the uh, the button here. The button's right here. Normally, if I had a battery pack in, the button would light up. But I don't have a battery pack in it because I don't really need it. Uh, and even down at uh, up here in Can uh, up here in Canada, where our temperatures get down to minus 30, uh, these jackets are very warm. And indoors, they keep you warm as well. So, anyways. Uh, if you want deeper information other than the package openings or what we have, what we've seen here, uh, you're going to have to follow around other channels. I will be announcing the other channels, uh, but none of the content that is on a deeper level will be presented here. This will be simply the Kawhi Tea House, um, the nerd environment, if you will, and how I exist as a nerd, or should we as Cyborg Alpha, Cyborg Alpha, Cyborg Alpha exist. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for now, and I will see you uh, in the next uh, segment of the vlog. I don't have a day, and I don't have a night. I'll explain that in the next segment. Well, welcome back to the vlog. This is the next segment. It is six hours and 24, 24 minutes into the uh, 21st day of uh, February 2000. 23, and I put the date, time and date stamp in there because this is a vlog, a video log. Uh, this is my journal. This is, our, I should say, our journal. Uh, we are Cyborg Alpha. Um, and give a bit of a background on Cyborg Alpha. Cyborg Alpha could be classified as a LARP, a live-action role-play. It's one of these nerd games that... Uh, uh, we nerdy types play, <laughs> so I certainly qualify for that. Um, <clears throat> this occurred several years ago that I've been playing uh, uh, Cyborg Alpha. And I've been doing other LARPs before then. I decided, well, why, instead of doing a fictional LARP, why not do something based in reality? And so this was my sort of... Uh, jaunt into this, uh, and it's the work I've been doing in cybernetics, uh, this is creating an artificial human being that has uh, a form of thought, a form of, of uh, life, uh, and the first step into it, the way you would step into artificial intelligence to create a sort of whole as a sentient being, <coughs> to create an android, the first step would be the cyborg. Now, a cyborg doesn't necessarily, because it is theoretical, it is, it is a, uh, a proof of concept, a sort of advanced concepts uh, type of research. The actual model doesn't have to be there itself. What you do is you construct a, a sort of a functioning model of what it would be uh, or what it could be. 
And in that, you would set your theory out. And so this would be part of the research paper that would give, if we are producing research papers, this would be actually part of the paper. Uh, this is the way, in some ways, of publishing something. People can, you can talk about AI as much as you want but as, and, and put up these great papers. But unless you actually create the thing, the cyborg or the, or the android, it's still, theory, it's still theory on paper. You actually haven't done anything. At the end, so going back and thinking about thinking this over, we began to realize that the paper, the thesis, is the cyborg. And so this is a step into that. That's what I did several years ago. And so taking, doing a live action role play, which requires a certain amount of uh, research. This is why nerds love this, is because you have to do research. Well, rather than doing research on something that is fictional or fantasy, why not bring the the real research into the same role? In other words, you treat the research as if as if it were the game live action role play. And that that was the creation of Cyborg Alpha. It was the research into cybernetics, into how machines could think or how it could behave. Talking about behavior, looking at behavior science, uh, and this sort of uh, left off in terms of uh, where I was in in quantum physics, in terms of uh, understanding the nature of the universe, uh, in that uh, Planck had brought forward the concept of the soul in quantum mechanics. He's the father of quantum mechanics. And it never really kind of died down. It was just sort of pushed to the side. Most scientists, in terms of what they published, didn't really talk about it. It was sort of there in the corner, but uh, because if you're part of an institute, uh, there are certain things you're allowed to do and certain things you're not allowed to do. Um, uh, you are restricted to the research that is, uh, quote-unquote, acceptable to that, to that department that you're in. And a large chunk of the sort of the, the unanswered questions that brought it back in the whole question of metaphysics, which just simply pushed them aside that oh, doesn't matter, we're going in this direction anyway. But however, they, they were never able to pin down the physics exactly. They were never able to bring back the the, the deterministic nature of physics uh, that they had in classical science this is, uh, is attributed to Newton, but it's not actually Newtonian mechanics. Newtonian mechanics, because of the nature of calculus, uh, doesn't actually bring in uh, what they call a deterministic physics, because calculus, calculus itself is a mathematical approximation. Is to say, I don't know things exactly, but can I approximate it? And that's the whole the fundamentals of calculus is the mathematics of approximation. So you could never actually prove anything with calculus. Anyone anyway, with some of these mathematical formulas, there's a lot of calculus in it, a lot of great mathematics, and you've got these equations. And this is what the problem with prediction is. You can't actually predict something. <laughs> the mathematics of calculus itself pre prevents the prediction. Because you're simply approximating. You, you've created an approximate model. And this creates a huge problem. So this is the, so a, new, a new style of physics, a new style of existence as a scientist, as, a, as an explorer, actually. Because you're exploring the universe, you're exploring the different things around you. and uh, A lot of times it can't be put into numbers. So you actually have to experience it rather than simply... Uh, let it be an inter letting it be a inter intellectual exercise. So, you know, if you want to do an intellectual exercise, that's great for you. But if you actually want to get out there, explore what's going on, to have a better understanding, then you need to go out and experience things. It, it's that experience that sort of adds to the understandings of the what you call the academics. Without the under without the understanding, without that experience, the academics mean nothing. And in many, many cases, if, when you're sticking you're sticking within the math uh, within the academics, you'll miss a large chunk of what's going on. So this is how Cyborg Alpha, we are, Cyborg Alpha exists. Uh, I am, in the physical present, uh, present uh, Dr. Daniel Karras, or uh, Bishop Daniel Karathanasis. Uh, Karathanasis was my original name in terms from my grandfather, but when he came over to the United States, his, my, my grandfather's name was changed to Karras. Thanasis was left off. And so instead of being Karathanasi, it became Karis. So uh, because I've stepped back into metaphysics, I did this more than 15 years ago, 
this just includes the meditation, because in the eastern part of the church, the eastern part of Christianity, there is still meditation. <laughs> there is, so pretty much looks like a lot like what you see in Buddhism or Hinduism. Uh, a large chunk of that is still there. It's just in a very hidden form. It's, just, it's not brought out into uh, what we call real world uh, observation. So that it, it, and it, it was never designed to be out in the world in terms of being something on display. It was always meant to be hidden, private, uh, something that is more internal uh, than anything else because you're reflecting on the what called the higher consciousness. Uh, ooh. But like I said, we're not going to get into that here. This is simply the introduction, the reintroduction of the vlog section in terms of the uh, Kauai Tea House, um, Kauai Tea House TV. Uh, that's the kitchen, which has been redone to a certain degree. Uh, there are now several music studios. There's actually three full music studios, uh, including one I had created on my tablet. This is, and it's connected to the sound system that I have here. I just haven't fully tested it out yet. But these things come in progress. It's amount of basically amount of certain amount of time is required to sort of bring everything in. And as I said, I don't really sleep that much. And this is it. Uh, I taught you last around two o'clock in the morning, and now it's uh, it's uh, six thirty. So basically, I got uh, uh, knocked off for a little bit around, around two o'clock in the morning. Two thirty. It's now six thirty. I have been awake since uh, five thirty-six. Wasn't really able to sleep, so I got up. I've got something to eat now. I've got a banana. I got a banana and some uh, banana. I almost always forget that a quick show on the camera does not necessarily translate to a quick show uh, in the viewership in terms of when you're playing the video back. And I have uh, my uh, box, my tub of candy. Uh, I always reuse things. This is sort of how I recycle, is by reusing things. Um, so, if you want anything further in terms of the depth, you have to go to other channels. Not on YouTube. We'll be off of YouTube because YouTube is unfortunately very restrictive at the current point in time. But that doesn't necessarily mean we can't do things. It, what happens is that we talk about different things here in terms of the lightness, the fluff, the cooking, um, uh, the different aspects of culture. And then from here, you can go to other channels, and then eventually they'll be always listed, uh, where you can go get the, we'll call the fuller, the uh, uh, the observation notes, you can get some of the, the, the vlogs that are actually verbal essays. Uh, in other words, you can get the fuller content elsewhere off of YouTube. And this is how uh, Cyber Graphic TV Network is going to expand. It's going to grow. It's going to include a number of different TV channels that have a variety of content on it so that you can sort of pick and choose what you want to watch and what you don't want to watch if, if you want to watch it. So, anyways, uh, this is uh, Cyborg Galva. I am an infinite ween because the uh, information that I study is infinite in sort of its expanse. And this is what calculus is based on. It's, it's an infinite point that's uh, it's a point that's infinitely far away. You simply approach it. You approximate it. It's in the limit. And that's it. That's as far as you go. And for me, this limit is it is no more than middle school. So I am a tween for life. I am middle school for life. And that's the way it is. And, you know, that's the way my life is. It, it is that path. It is the jump, the journey. And it takes different forms. It's sometimes it's knocked down. It's sometimes when you're doing an upgrade or... or, or, or you have to retool, you have to readjust, and not always, things don't always remain the same. So, anyways, uh, I think I'll leave that here for now. This is the end of this segment. I will see you in the next segment. Welcome. Welcome to the
library. And I am a librarian. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.